Good afternoon, and this video we'll begin looking at the Kevin Zaka video. It's mirrored on uh, Wayne Cook's channel. So it's really Wayne Cook's uh, channel. He's mirroring uh, Zaka. Uh, Zaka is a little puppet. <laughs> he just he, that's his mouthpiece. He doesn't make the videos. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start in the beginning here. Uh, false teacher, Edward PF123 teaches Calvinism. So that's there. It's going to be interesting to see how this is. I remember I'll be disagreeing with Kevin Zach over the gap issue, over angels mating, foreign angels mating with women. With women. That he actually, I, for my God, I don't think he, he believes in his prayer. But this is what they're going to hang, hold on to and then make issues, molehills, uh, mountains out of molehills on the, uh, these things. It's spinning now. There is no end to the man's lies, to his... I started off good. <laughs> it's the man's and man's lies. Twisting of the word of God, it is putridness. <laughs> and and uh, now he's uh, putting Calvin in... in his teaching and I'm going to play a little clip of I'll play a little clip Zaka play the video and discuss it like I'm discussing it with you discussing your video don't play a little clip what he's talking about here I'm getting a lot of, getting a lot of spinning that's not the gospel. You can't believe the gospel with just your just to a head. Now it's this not This is an argument against the head versus heart dichotomy, I'm saying. So it's not just things a head versus heart dichotomy. That's the context of what I'm speaking about here. So let's keep the context in. So you can't believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Okay, he calls that a head knowledge. Uh, no. It's not, but it's quite the opposite. I'm saying is that you can't believe that until you repent of your unbelief. It just can't be intellectual knowledge. That was the point of what I was saying. What is this guy, nut? Well, that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> okay, now he's lying once again because a head knowledge is is knowing that there was a man named Jesus a couple thousand years ago that got crucified by the Romans. Yeah, that's exactly right. Those I'm arguing against the people who say those are head knowledge and who make it make historical issues and then say, well, see, a person can get saved with head knowledge versus a heart knowledge. And the point is, is that, yeah, there are certain historical facts that people can believe about Jesus, but that won't save them. You've got to believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross personal sins. And you're not going to believe that until you repent of your unbelief. So there can't be anything, it can't be anything uh, like a head knowledge. And that's an argument against Calvin who taught that there would be professing uh, people in, the, in, in Calvinism and said there could be people who would be deceived by God, thinking they were saved, but then they were saved. The head heart knowledge is a doctrine created by Calvinism. See, that's why I was going to play the whole video, people. Okay, that's a head knowledge. You know about this man named Jesus. Oh, look, you know, um, some people claim that he I don't think he actually watched the whole video. It's a prophet. Um, he's the 29th prophet of Islam. Um, he was a great spiritual leader and probably traveled to India. 
but he got on the wrong side of the Roman government and they crucified him. Um, this is why he is so very wicked, very cunning, okay? Just like his father, the devil. And I'm not mincing words in this video. His vileness is absolutely putrid. Well, your stupidity is putrid. Because if you had, if you take in the whole video in context and people actually hear what they said instead of a little pit, bit, then you're trying to re rearrange what I'm saying. The point is making the exact same point you're making. That there are historical facts that Jesus' people can believe in. That won't save them. So it's not just things a head belief. Versus a heart belief. And these people just believe something in their head and they thought they were saved. You've got to repent of your own belief. And actually believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. That's not history. That's personal. Uh, because that, you just can't believe it. You mean, if, if, uh, uh, it's just ahead. You, mean, you have to be fully persuaded. You have to get under conviction for your sins. You know you need to save it. And always... Okay. you got to get under conviction for your sins. Okay. You can't just believe the gospel. Now you have to get under conviction for your sins. Of course. Conviction always precedes... Uh, salvation. Of course you get conviction on these sins. You have to be told you're a sinner before you get saved. How would you know you need a savior unless you get under conviction for your sins? <laughs> what is he talking about? That's why the first three chapters of Romans are conviction. Tell them what, what, how, what great sinners we are. Somewhere in Romans you're going to find your sins. You say, oh yeah, that's me. You're dead now. Okay. We need to understand that we're sinners. Yeah, and how do you do that? In order to believe the gospel. Yeah, how do you do that? Because otherwise, what are we getting saved from? Yeah, and how do you get that? We need to understand that there is a hell fire that pe yeah. people are going to. What are you getting saved from? If there is a... That's conviction. If there is no need to understand that you're a sinner then you don't really need a savior. You don't understand your need for a savior. That's why you need conviction. Is this guy retarded? <laughs> the thief on the cross, he knew what he was getting. He knew it was just. Does he actually know that he, he's arguing against uh, uh, for my point now? I said you have to get on the conviction. That's why there's such a thing as a head belief. Now he's making my case. Okay, but... To get under conviction for all of your sins, now he's going back and teaching about the same thing that he criticized Mark Hunter. And he's saying about all, all your sins. Did I say anywhere about all your sins? I said get under conviction for, for your sins. That you're a sinner. That you're a sinner. Mark Hunter preaches you got to repent of your sins. I didn't say repent of your sins. you got to get conviction that you're a sinner. Mark Hunter... I guess he's lining up with my con now. Preachers, you gotta repent of your sins. Or, um, it's heresy. It's Calvinism. It's gotta be taught. <laughs> you know, it has to be revealed. The Holy Spirit reveals it, puts you on the conviction. Christ died for your sins on the cross, rose again from the dead. That's spiritual. That's spiritual. That's the Holy Spirit illuminating that to you. That's right. Not historical facts that these guys, well, Jesus is a head, head book, you know, see, so there's these historical facts. And you go to, you know, believe that Jesus Christ died for you, of course, just, you can't believe that. Do you hear that, wickedness? You can't believe that. He's calling that the historical facts. Um, first of all, you can't believe that without the Holy Spirit. In other words, the fact that Jesus Christ died for your personal sins on the cross. It's not just in a matter of an historical fact. It's an issue of repentance of our own belief. And you guys say, wow, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. It's not just history. It's dealing with me personally. I believe that this is exactly the kind of person that the Apostle Peter was referring to in the third chapter of his second epistle. And we're going to get to that. But first of all, What's say a scripture? And by the way, he used to use this scripture, but then he didn't like it anymore. And he also hates Romans chapter 10, says that's only for the Israelites. 
Um, it, it was for the Jews of his day. I mean, 9, 10, and Romans 9, 9, 10, 11, okay, authentical. We don't go to Romans 9. I'm going to show you from Hoffman, the Hoffman's thing. All these guys who were Romans 9. No, Romans 9 is for the Jew. Romans 11 is for the Jew. But Romans 10 is what? Well, it's in his prayer, you can find, so you're going to keep that for us. Romans 9, 10, 11 are pair identical. That's Schofield. It's all over the place. He's a complicated mess. Not complicated at all. This guy wants to mistake what scriptures are saying and what I'm saying. I say you got to come under conviction for your sins. And he brings in Mark Hunter who says you got to repent of your sins. You say anything, repent of your sins. And I say all your sins. You just got to know you're a sinner. He's a hyper dispensationalist, a, a Bible chopper upper. I'm a dispensationalist. I'm not a hyper dispensationalist. I believe uh, church began Acts 2. So um, let's look over here at 1 Corinthians. See what Paul says. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. So, that is the gospel that was delivered. Um, you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you, was buried, was rose again the third day. Died for you. He died for your sins on the cross. That's not per that's not historical. That's personal. And obviously, it's the awesome power of the resurrection that gives us hope. Okay? Right. Okay. And it was Jesus Christ, the person who shed the blood on the cross that paid for us. Yeah, and you won't find that in Romans ten. Sins. But he goes over there and says, there's no blood in Romans 10. There, there isn't. Fine. Let's see what this guy finds blood in Romans 10. There's no blood in Acts chapter 2. Well, there isn't. Fine. Fine where says, Peter says anything about dying for Christ dying for anyone's sins on the cross in Acts 2. Buckman used to make a joke about that. And he said, well, I'll give $10,000 to anybody who can find it. And he, they say, well, when you have $10,000, well, I can get it as quick as you can find it. <laughs> so, you're not going to find they, Peter is talking about the Davidic covenant. There's a second offer made to the Jews. They could still respond to that second offer, offer the kingdom gospel. And that got, that ended at when the stoning of Stephen at uh, Acts chapter 7. Well, he's a fool. And I've already done previous videos on this. Um, Show it. Very easy, people, to show me one more. Show, go to Acts chapter 2 and says, show me what Peter it says, Jesus Christ died for your sins, of course. You can find that in Acts 13. Paul talks about it. Acts 13. But you won't find Acts 2. You won't find it in Romans 10. The blood. Jesus Christ. In Romans 10, 9, 10. Nothing about Romans 10, 9, 10 talking about Jesus Christ dying for everyone's sins. That's not the gospel. And I'm going to be posting some on my channel. But this is exactly the kind of person that Peter was talking about over in his second epistle in the third chapter. Before we get there, let's look at Ephesians. See, they want to look at Ephesians. Ephesians also says what, what Peter, what Christ, uh, Paul taught as being salvation. And... Um, 112, I think it's 112. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ephesians 112. That we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Trust in Christ. In whom he also trusted. After that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom that F, F which gospel of your salvation? Jesus Christ by and free course, the sins for the court on the cross, rose again from the dead. That's a free, that's First Corinthians three through four, but you also have to trust in Christ. See, you can't just believe that Jesus Christ died for the sins and course rose again from the dead and stop there. You got to be trusting in Him for salvation. That makes a difference in Roman Catholics who believe that, as opposed to people who are actually saved. In whom also the F that if that you believed, you will see what the Holy Spirit promised. So. They believe what Jesus Christ died for the, what they, Jesus Christ did for them on the cross. 
And that's what he pours from the Romans, well, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 13, 15 through 3 through 4. He's getting to the resurrection. And it's really about the walk in 15, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, the walk. It's really talking about using the resurrected life as part of your walk, which is dealing with Romans, uh, Romans chapter 8. And the Colossians, in uh, Colossians 3, we're supposed to consider ourselves risen with Christ. So you got the gospel here, how Christ pointed to the Ephesians. Whom he also you trusted, after you believe the gospel of your salvation, then you will seal the Holy Spirit. That was all, they all go together. Now this guy's already walked things out of taking out of context, and now he's going to go into uh, you know Second Peter three. He's just gonna you know uh, yak yak and something. Uh, so, oh, he's not saying this. He's not saying that. You have to come into conviction for your sins, and then he, he's saying, "Well, let's say you have to come into conviction for your sins." Yeah, and then he brings up Mark Hunter. Well, Mark Hunter said you have to repent of your sins. I don't say you have to repent of your sins. You have to repent of your unbelief. That's the difference between me and Mark Hunter. Had. <laughs> That'll be a big issue. Uh, and then, of course, oh, he doesn't use. Well, there's no. There's, he says there's no blood in Romans ten. Romans ten. There's no. Uh, uh, and Jesus, uh, there's no dying for sin. But since does he go to those passages? Does he go to Acts chapter two and say, "Here's who said wrong"? Does he go to Romans ten and show me where I'm wrong? So far, he hasn't. So let me go put this up. And uh, this is gonna be long, <laughs> five parts, of but we'll put this up. Uh, because you gotta go slow with these guys. You gotta go slow. He's all over the place. Just you know, hey, if you're gonna, you know, look at the whole video. I know it's a tedious thing. It's fair Mac, you know, I'm doing his video. Gotta go through part by part. So I do a blind. They go through what he says. Most, you know, except he, a lot of times there's you know issues he can go past. But I let you know I'm going past them. I'm not gonna take a little snippet. The head belief versus heart belief. The context was I was arguing against the head belief. So we'll stop here, put this up, and deal with another you know, few minutes, you know, so I can do how going go in the next video. Remember, this is merely on Wayne Crook's video that I agree with the most of the statement of faith. <laughs> but he's Wayne Crook is against dispensational differences in salvation. If I'm wrong with Acts 2, Acts 2, show me what Peter says some uh, Jesus Christ died for your sins in the course. You can find that in Acts 13. Can't find Acts 2. And you can't find anything like that in Romans 10. Certainly 10 Romans 10 9, 10. That won't get you saved. That's supposed to be a statement of faith. If, you know, if they state Romans 10 9, 10, like it's 1 Corinthians 3 through 5. And it's not. You have to read your scratch life your sins in the cross. That isn't Romans 10 9, 10. And you think you're, like, you're crazy. You look at it and say, and and and, and chick track cite Romans 10 9, 10 when they they're, they're quoting Jesus Christ died for your sins and of course was against the dead. What's well, anything about Jesus? There's anything Romans 10 9, 10 about Jesus Christ dying for your sins and of course. Doesn't say a word about it. So if you just went to Romans 10 9 10 without knowing Jesus Christ died for your sins and of course, you couldn't get saved. And they act like I'm crazy. <laughs> so we'll put this up. Amen.